I'm, I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of about where we see the future of DDEX going. Um, as we've said, um, DDEX is now 11 years old. And to be honest, it took five or six years for the organization really to build any momentum. Um, the plenary meeting we've just had this week here, there were 200 and, uh, sorry, 110, 120 people attending. And we've had numbers like that over the last sort of year or two. Um, but in the early years, we were lucky if there were 30 people at the meetings. So it's taken a long while to get the momentum going. But I do believe that we've now turned that corner. And um, for example, in the last six months, we've had 40 new members come on board, or even it might even be 16. Um, and that's more or less the same as came on board in the previous six months. So it's definitely growing. Um, and um, the momentum is behind the standards um, and the people are obviously seeing the benefits um, of the, the last 10 or 11 years. In terms of where we are now and where we're going over the next uh, few months um, and years, um, as was mentioned, the ERN4 is currently still a sort of internal standard. Once that's been tested and, and somebody's kicked the tires hard enough and we know that it's working, that will get released as a, a, as a DDEX standard. Uh, and I can see that happening within the first six months of next year because a number of the member companies of DDEX have said they're actually going to start doing test implementations over the next three to six months. Another big deployment relates to the musical work notification message, which Neil's just talked about, and this um, deployment of those um, with the Sound Exchange Hub. Um, if any of you have had anything to do with mechanical licensing in the US, you'll know what a mess it is in terms of, certainly in terms of the communication, um, uh, let alone any other issues. Um, and to actually have a situation where certainly the major publishers and the major record companies and, and others are intending to implement the MWN by the end of quarter two next year in the context of the Sound Exchange Hub. Hopefully we will start to see um, a little improvement in, in the, the, the licensing process uh, around US mechanicals. Another area that I think will grow uh, over the next uh, year or so relates to the uh, musical, uh, uh, the music licensing companies, the, the resounds and the PPLs of this world. Um, we have been, they've been working very hard on a, 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 an upgrade to their, uh, to the MLC standard. Um, and we have now seen very recently that the record companies have uh, engaged much more in this work um, because, um, simply put, the MLCs are generating large amounts of money and the record labels want to make sure that the right people get paid. Um, and so there's a lot of work going on, again, with the major labels and, and the MLC members of DDEX um, to start to put choreographies and um, uh, uh, better practice in place using the MLC messages to enable you know, better repertoire information to feed through all of the MLCs and ensure that the right people are going to get paid. Yeah, thanks, that's a, a good update on the MLC, but I would also say that independent record companies are extremely interested and in, um, vigorously engaged in this as well, um, although it's a bit more tricky for them, but, but there is work in the independent sector on this too. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that sort of allows me to segue into my next point, which is, um, I mentioned uh, early on we have this concept of liaison organizations within DDEX. Um, up until now, we've really only had an active relationship with CSAC and IFPI, um, although we also have liaison relationships with RAAA, um, with BEAM, which is the sister organization of CSAC, uh, Music Biz in, in the US, and AIM, the independent uh, uh, um, trade association in, um, in the UK. What's been happening very clearly over the last uh, year or so is a lot more organizations with an interest in what DDEX do, is doing have 
been contacting us and saying we want to be a liaison organization we represent a community that really needs to understand DDEX but they're as individual organizations it's not something they can commit to because it requires not only a membership fee but you to make the most of being a member you need to put some resources behind it and have people come to the meetings and get involved so organizations like WIN which is the World Independent Network um, are likely to become a liaison organization in the very very near future and there are several others lining up uh, to do that and so I expect as a consequence of that we'll see much more engagement from an, an industry-wide perspective which will enable much wider communication of what we're doing than, than we've, we've been able to do up until now. Um, basically PR and comms is not something that DDEX has done very well in the last 10 years um, and we really need to start upping our game uh, on all of that. And whilst you may say, why hasn't DDEX got a strategy? Um, I would explain, as most companies have a strategy. Um, when DDEX really started, it was basically a firefighting effort. People had real problems, they needed them dealt with quickly. Uh, and so whenever somebody shouted loudly, I need something for this or I need something for that, that's what we did. Um, and although we've sort of managed to go in a straight line, there were some wiggles along the way. Um, but now that there is the winds behind the activity and behind the organization, we really need to have at the very least uh, an agreed direction of travel. Where, where are we trying um, within the DDEX remit to sort of move the industry forward and how are we going to go about it rather than just simply working on the basis of he who shouts loudest gets, gets some stuff done. Um, so I think during the course of next year you will see um, that, we, that that will start to come into place uh, and that will also have a, a galvanizing effect on the, on the amount of work that we, that we get through. So I am you know, very excited having done this for 11 years and at times really sort of felt like taking a long run off a short pier. Um, that, that has very much changed in the last three or four years. There is, a, there is a huge momentum behind what we're doing and a huge engagement from across the industry. And if any of you are in a position to put the resource in place to become a member and get involved, we would obviously welcome you with open arms. Now that ISO is involved um, and we're using standards, uh, what inevitably always follows is compliance. So my question is in making sure your data is accurate and starting to put policies and procedures in place to assure those types of accuracies, how much pressure is this going to be the de facto way of doing business going forward? How soon is this going to be a must do rather than a should do? Okay, um, I, I think you'll find in certain areas of the business it's a must do already. Um, most of the, well, all of the major labels and most of the significant uh, distributor aggregator companies insist on using ERN. They, they won't allow, they won't countenance communication using anything else. There are one or two holdouts, but basically that's, that's the case. Um, the sales and usage report has very strong um, uh, spread in, in Europe, less so over this side of the pond, um, but it's certainly uh, very strong in Europe and parts of Asia. Um, so I couldn't put a date on it, and it'll vary from place to place. I think the, what R uh, Richard was saying about the MLCs, again, that started with literally two or three of them. We now have about eight members from that community, and obviously the labels are, are part of it. And so it's really, really building up. Um, the one thing I would say that you, you used the word compliant or conformance. One of the biggest criticisms we have about or we receive about DDEX is that the implementations of what's supposed to be a standard are not the same. Um, and we've tried through things like the, uh, the profiles that Niels talked about earlier uh, to narrow the specifications to such a point that actually there is only one way of doing it. But still people seem to be able to come up with ways of not doing it that way. Um, 
One of the things that we've been doing over the last three days here is to re-energize activities around conformance. And we will, over the next year, um, be pushing conformance standards within, um, within DDEX, where there will be rules around um, what, what, does, what does it mean to be conformant. And if, uh, if you are conformant, maybe you'll get a certificate. Then what happens if you cease being conformant? How do you take that away? That's, you know, that's uh, not an easy thing to do, but we are definitely going to move very seriously in that direction. We did a lot of groundwork up until about uh, two years ago, but we never actually pushed through. Um, but now there is a very strong desire that that actually happens. I, I also want to comment that um, in our experience implementing the MWL, the uh, Musical Works License messages with the major labels, it was really a multi months going into years sometimes to fix some of the, the you know, outlier problems that we were having. Um, and so it's, it, you can't, you know, uh, try, trying to impose that on people, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of uh, dedication and resources that most of the smaller um, organizations would not have. So it, it becomes really difficult and I don't know, you know, what the next stage is to try to promote these types of standards in a more manageable way or, or a better way of, for smaller organizations to be able to handle them. But right now, I just, I just don't see it. I think it's fair to say uh, that part of what you said um, is the reason why we have restructured the, the ERN the way we have restructured the ERN, because of exactly these, these issues. Um, it was convoluted, complex, and, and, and too rich. Um, so that people had five different ways of doing one thing, and if you have five different ways, six people then will find seven ways of doing the same thing. So, um, and that should be much better with, with, with a new ERN. The same applies to the licensing message. Um, the, the, the licensing message as it was used uh, or is used in, in Canada is about, well, it's now six years ago that that project was? 2013. 2013. So um, the, the current version of the MWN and forthcoming MWL and forthcoming letters of direction message is significantly smaller and more compact than a lot of the, 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 the issues that you were reporting and rightfully complaining about should go away. I say should because only, uh, well, the, the proof is in eating. Uh, so we will need to find whether that is, is the case. But I'm pretty confident that it is. Uh, one other thing I would say about in the, in the sort of package of conformance stuff is one of the things we will look at is developing tools that people can use to at least tell them whether the, the implementation they're doing is conformant. We actually have two already. It's just we haven't deployed them properly. And by that I mean that you, what you can do is to uh, push your, your implementation into this validator and it'll spit out a message that says, no, this is wrong, this isn't the right structure and this is in the wrong place and whatever it happens to be. Um, and we need to do some more of that. But it, you know, it's, it, like everybody, it's resource and priorities. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I know it's much simpler on the MLC side than it is in the complicated world of music publishing, but um, I don't think there are any insurmountable obstacles to implementation. Um, one example, the um, Confederation of Performer Societies, SCAPRA, has adopted the DDEX MLC standard for its VRDB2 project, and I, my understanding is that the participation of societies in VRDB2 is going to be made mandatory at some point by SCAPRA. Um, and, and the, the other side of it, I think, in terms of um, implementation tools, DDEX Secretariat has been incredibly helpful in the, in the DDEX MLC sphere, which I know a lot about, running implementers workshops, you know, uh, coordinating XML samples and answering all sorts of crazy queries. So I think it's, you know, to a certain extent, we're, we're building up really great resources um, and there's a lot of assistance there to help implement and deploy these standards correctly. Oh, as often, just giving a comment instead of a question. Uh, but I can speak from experience some advice as a receiver of a DDEX, one particular DDEX message. 
Um, if you're a receiver, I would highly recommend insisting very strongly that your sender adheres to the standard. Um, you have a lot more power than you think. And if you say no to something landing on your shores that doesn't conform to the standard, um, in my experience, almost everybody listens. As long as you say it nicely. <laughs> uh, the, and perhaps even handhold them through what needs to be fixed to conform to the standard. Uh, I've found uh, almost everybody says yes. Uh, you talked, um, um, Neil touched on earlier, um, the, uh, some way down the line, the AV, for want of a better word, call it VRIN or whatever. Uh, have you had any uh, expression of interest from those streaming companies like the Netflix and such a bit of participating in any of Well, that? Netflix is a member. They recently became a member at the beginning of this year. At the moment, um, they're, they're really looking at it from the point of the, uh, music on its own. Um, one of the limitations we have is that we, we don't venture into areas where we don't have a decent representation of members because without that, you don't have the domain experience that will allow us to actually create the standards. We could make things up, but it would be wrong because we don't have the domain experience. So um, we don't have a lot of AV uh, interest within the membership. Um, obviously, the, a lot of the labels do music videos and some, some um, AV production, but we don't have broadcasters, we don't have film companies or anything like that. And without that, that domain experience, we would be reluctant to move too far in that direction. Is as the broadcasters are like, for example, CBS and some of these things are going, starting to create, <coughs> excuse me, starting to create direct streaming programming. Um, is, is it not worthwhile to reach out to them and see if they want to participate? Well, um, I, I would love them to be part of it, but um, to be frank, we've got. I mean, the list of activities that's come out of the last week makes me faint. To actually add broadcasting to it as well, I think I would absolutely you know, fall to pieces. So, I mean, yes, I think there's, there is a likelihood over time that, that the momentum that DDEX has got could start to bring them in, but I, I, it's, it's not a priority at the moment, I'm afraid.